So thank you very much for the opportunity to present uh, this baby robot. Uh, it's also a great opportunity to travel and to see people in in person and to enjoy a true meeting with you know food and drinks and discussions. So uh, this is my disclosure. This robot is actually basically based on a concept that I introduced. And this is Tel Aviv, which is a vibrant hub of uh, technology startups. Uh, Israel is a country of 8 million people, and that has uh, currently 18 unicorns, startup companies. And it's the third country in terms of SNASDAQ uh, listed companies in the world after the United States and China, with a population smaller than New Jersey. Uh, when you look at what we call robots, which is truly electromechanical systems today, uh, there are two reasons why we were looking for something like that. One of them is to augment our senses. Uh, we want to see things that we couldn't see with our own eyes. We want to make sure that we see borders of tumors, uh, lymph nodes, things that are not very visible to us. And we also want to augment our action, which is actually making us technically better, either do things better or do things that we couldn't do before, uh, using some kind of electromechanical system between us and the patient. And it turns out that most robotic systems are not used for either. They're just used to make us feel more comfortable doing a little more complex procedure or even simple procedure. So if you look at a big console robot, uh, what do we get from that? You get dexterity. There's no question that you're better uh, using these systems. Uh, and that was shown in a lot of bench testing. You get micrometric uh, precision. We're, I'm not so sure how much that is. You know, it's not nice to say, but in general surgery, one centimeter here and there, it doesn't really matter. Uh, or maybe half a centimeter, but millimeters or microns really don't really matter. Uh, it's a very, very stable platform. I'm not sure how much that is important. There is the very good uh, 3D augmented vision. I think that's very important and the ergonomics of sitting uh, comfortably on a chair with uh, removing your shoes is uh, really something that uh, surgeons, especially my age, uh, can greet uh, very happily. Actually, I have a friend who was told that if he uses a robot, it will extend his clinical career by five years. He said, I'll kill you if you tell me that again. So they're really uh, cool to use. They're very comfortable to use. You're sitting. You feel comfortable doing complex uh, stuff. There is a lot of uh, bench data or lab data showing you can perform better. Uh, so there are many good reasons to use large uh, robotic systems. However, there are some uh, drawbacks. Uh, there is something that I feel personally feel detached from uh, my patient when I don't stand next to the patient uh, scrubbed in and I have to rely on somebody else uh, being there. Uh, the money thing is, I think, a crucial thing, especially at the times that we're approaching today. I think healthcare dollars and the way they're spent is going, are going to be in the center of a very hot uh, debate in the next years. Uh, they're also logistically cumbersome. People, if you think of uh, a typical operating room, uh, just imagine if you want to equip your 20 or 25 operating rooms with some kind of a robotic uh, platform, putting, uh, driving 20 Da Vinci's or CMR's into these 20 operating rooms, even if you don't think about the price, is going to be a big hassle. Uh, and actually, there's no a lot of, not a lot of decisive data showing that you're really improving your patient on outcome, except for very, very specific niches or niche procedures that are ultra complex. So I don't see anyone, uh, there's, and there's more and more data showing uh, that there's really no clinical benefit or marginal clinical benefit in using large robotic systems for the patients. So if you look at the side of the senses, there's a lot of there. Uh, you can buy a lot of uh, systems that can give you the sensing part or the visualization part regardless of what kind of robotic system you would use. There's 4K, there's ICG, there's 3D, and there's, I think, very promising technology. Multispectral imaging is going to come into the market in the next few years, which is really going to alter the way we do some things, especially cancer surgery. 
So if you think of something that will be a robotic procedure or robotic uh, tool that will be next to the patient, it has uh, some merits. You're within the sterile field, you can use different types of instruments. Some of them are robotized or robotic and some of them are simple. Uh, you don't need a dedicated team. It's a very flexible and agile uh, solution and uh, you take away a lot of the hassle and the expertise around it. So this is what we came up with. Uh, it's a robotized laparoscopic instrument. Uh, it has three parts, like most things in the, in the world. Uh, it has a control interface that you hold in your hand. It's very comfortable. It has a drive unit that has motors and a lot of computing power, and it has a detachable single patient use tip. Uh, the, the tips are needle holders, hooks, scissors, the dissectors, uh, and in, I'll show you a little later. Uh, and this is a, a short demo of what it does. It's uh, pretty lightweight. And whatever you do with the fingers happens at the tips. And then if you double click the command button, uh, whatever you do with your wrist happens at the tip as well. So it's actually a robotized laparoscopic instrument. Uh, it's very easy to learn how to use it. Uh, it has the fulcrum effect, so it's not unlike uh, the big robotic systems, when you move your right hand to the right, the instrument moves to the right. Here, it's exactly like a laparoscopy. Uh, so it has some kind of a, a mental uh, burden in the beginning until you get used to it. And uh, it has very few buttons. There you can actually scale the motion and limit some of the degrees of motion uh, if you want. Uh, and there's a button that to starts and stops the articulation. You can uh, also lock the uh, device in a certain angle and create a rigid uh, articulated device while still maintaining the, the motion of the tip. And there is a panic button that you just puts everything into a limp so you can take it out if something bad happens. Uh, so there is a very good control interface. There is a lot of data in coming in and out of the device into the machine. Uh, the articulation solution is very good, so it allows articulation with very small motors, but it's still a very robust device. They work, we work a lot with that, and it really works well. And you can personalize the device to the degree of uh, scale of the surgeon and also uh, to the procedure you're, pre you're performing. So there's a lot of little tricks that you can do to make the device really fit what you're doing. So uh, basically, it's a plug-and-play system. It's fully wristed. You can customize it. It's pretty lightweight. Uh, you're not committed to a number of instruments that you use during the case. You can use one or two or three as much as you want. Uh, you can take it in and out of any standard 5 millimeter trocar, so you don't need anything dedicated. You don't change drastically the way you perform procedures. You just feel more comfortable doing them. You don't need any, any dedicated stuff. The learning curve is... Uh, quite fast. Most surgeons train somewhere between 45 minutes to two and a half hours on a box and then they go to the OR and start using it on their patient and they feel pretty comfortable doing it. Uh, so we've been doing a clinic, we've been using clinically the device for a couple of years. Uh, some of the times uh, we're still within uh, trials and now they're uh, commercial. So you can see actually that it gives you a very nice uh, controllability and maneuverability uh, in doing different uh, cases. This is the needle holder. Uh, we've been using it in hernias, in prostatectomies, uh, in colorectal surgery, I'll show you a little. Uh, and even in more complex procedures, uh, this is two of my videos. This is a, a large parasophageal hernia, the dissection, it, it allows uh, on the left and on the right is uh, the beginning of a right hemicolectomy for cancer. And uh, it gives you a really nice maneuverability uh, and uh, it's really a lot of fun uh, operating with that. It gives you access to deeper places that are hard to reach. It's five millimeters, so it's not obstructing your view. Uh, and and in the, in the colon cases, I use the hook for the dissection, and then I do all my uh, colons. I do uh, intracorporeal anastomosis, so I use the needle holder for uh, suturing uh, the anastomosis. 
and it makes the procedure really cool. I really enjoy using it. So currently, we've, uh, as opposed to eight and a half million patients, we are around the 500, but uh, moving, <laughs> moving forward strong. Uh, we've done that in general surgery, urology, some thoracic cases, uh, some pediatric surgery cases, and some GYN. Uh, we currently have FDA approved three tips, which is a monopolar hook, a needle holder, and a grasper, and soon this is gonna be a scissors, and uh, uh, Maryland dissector, and then uh, everything that's, that we like using is going to be available. It is uh, currently fully commercial in the United States and in uh, Europe. Uh, we have a distributor in Europe for the entire uh, uh, for the entire Europe, and then we have we're beginning uh, uh, to distribute it into fine places in the U.S. Uh, that will start using the device. Uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, potential in the system for data acquisition and analysis of tissue. Uh, and they're, they're under the hood of the device, there's, there are capabilities that are not have been exploited uh, yet, and they will probably be uh, slowly uh, shown uh, and to, to, be, uh, to be able to fully appreciate what it can do. And, it's, I think, important to understand that if you marry or you combine um, head-mounted, sophisticated head-mounted display and handheld devices that can communicate between themselves, you can actually create a very, very interesting, uh, sort of like a plug-and-play uh, robotic platform that uh, is very open access and allows you to integrate many instruments into it, including uh, flexible endoscopes, uh, rigid instruments, uh, all kinds of things, and visualization uh, that comes with it. And you can actually see or envision how can uh, the combination of all these things can create a really um, beautiful system uh, that will allow you to do things that are very difficult to do uh, today. So basically, this is a surgeon augmenting extension uh, the vision is a decentralized, ubiquitous, plug-and-play, location and procedure aware, and AI-driven platform, not only a handheld instrument. And uh, I think that uh, the same way uh, smartphones and laptop computers did not try to build, uh, the companies that made them did not try to build a bigger mainframe computer or a better Nokia phone, uh, the idea is to try to attack the same problem from a completely different angle, and I think that's what we're attempting to do. Thank you very much.